Hi, this is Steve Walton from Tropic Heating and PatioHeat.com. Here we're going to take a look at a residential application. And you can see here we have this, um, this is a wood burning fireplace and a seating area over here. And then a dining space over here. I threw in some chairs over this side here. There is going to be a fan. I'm not sure exactly the elevation of the bottom of the fan, but I don't think that's going to be an issue here on this application, at least the way that I'm um, planning this out. And also there are doors and windows throughout the space um, that I haven't plotted in here because um, they all swing inwards, so we're not concerned about those. Let's go ahead and look at the overall heights and uh, dimensions. So I, I have it at uh, 9 foot 6, this edge here, which is the ceiling over here. And I'm not sure if this is a... Um, a flat ceiling or if that is uh, like gabled or something. Um, same over here. This here you can see that's open. So that's that 9.6 and then you can see the dimensions 22 for um, 12 feet this direction here. The depth from this outer edge to the wall about 10, 8 and a half roughly. And then uh, this space over here, 13, so we'll call it uh, 14, in, 14 feet from here to this inside edge. Again, this is a gas burning, or excuse me, a, uh, a wood burning fireplace. And wood burning fireplaces can produce much more heat than a gas burning fireplace. That's just because of the uh, fact that wood will radiate heat much better than um, like a fixed gas unit. So uh, that's something that you can take in consideration if, in fact, you are going to burn that um, during the different events that you might have that are cold outside. So, all right, you might have noticed that I have a couple of um, openings here, a couple over here, and then let's go ahead and turn off the dimensions. I'm actually going to hide this fireplace for a minute, and that way we can see this model a little bit easier. The fireplace is still going to be there, obviously. And let's go here. I'm going to turn off the ray. So what I've done is um, essentially I've taken just two 6,000 watt units. Now, it's going to be a hard application with the fireplace there. You know, it's hard to um, manipulate the ray so that it's going to hit the center of the room here very well. And also, um, going back here on the wall, we're not going to really reach out like we want to unless uh, there's a window here and things of that nature. But um, I think this would probably be the, the, the best option here. And what I've done basically is I think this was a 8 to 12 slope here. And I've just gone with the slope and I mounted the heater with that slope. And so you can see that uh, actually let me just put the clearances here. You can see that I've met my six inches of clearance. I've actually barely met it here, but you want to make sure you got six inches of clearance here to the side of the unit all around the top side. And it, that's true for the left and right as well. And then over here as well, you can see that. Again, six inches of clearance. And we do have a wall over here that we need to maintain that six inches of clearance to. I have centered, sorry, centered the unit with the, uh, basically in the space from, let's say, I think I did it from this edge to this edge. So it might be a little bit to the right, um, but in any case, it'll still be fine. And then of course we have the clearances below the heaters. And you can see that we actually are meeting a, a little bit of an issue over here. So we might have to adjust this. I didn't notice that earlier, but we might have to bring the heater up, let's say, so that we're meeting that uh, the total 18 inches of clearance on the bottom side. Let's see if I can get that here. So that is an additional 12 inches up. And we're going to probably want to do that to the side here, although we don't have that same issue with the wall. So that, that way it'll look at least um, un uniform throughout the space. But let's go ahead and look at the uh, ray. Um, now you can see that the 6,000 watt unit, its maximum throw is about 
this um, 10 foot length, but we do have crossover rays, a massive amount of crossover rays basically. And if we do move this one up here, we're gonna get this a little bit higher on this left side. So this will cover the area fairly well, I think. I think you'll be pleased with that. Now, if you have seating out here, then that might be an issue um, if it's beyond that you know, area over here, but I kind of doubt it. I think this would be very similar to what the customer is um, looking to put in there. Over here, you'll see that I have also 6,000 watt units, and these are flush mounted. I chose this orientation because of the fact that the, uh, the rooftop goes this direction. I'm assuming the joists are this direction as well. And here you can see we have the, uh, well, let's look, go ahead and look at the uh, clearances on the left is no problem. On the right, I have no problem um, with regards to that opening. And um, hold on one second. Sorry about that interruption, but um, yeah, so I'm thinking the orientation should go this way based on the uh, roof style here. And these are 6,000 watt units, like I said, and you could make them 5,000 watts. 5,000 watts are um, a little bit shorter of a unit, so the footprint is similar enough for this application, and you'd probably like it a little bit better, but I just wanted to show the 6,000 watt units there. These are the 5,000 watts. You can see that they're a shorter profile here. Um, they put out a good footprint. Now I'm not sure if they even want this area here um, covered, but you can see the 5,000 watt units don't cover down as far. Um, I have this at four feet over, and then I believe four feet from this edge, and then I believe another um, five feet over here, and that kind of centers these two units. Um, but you get a good enough cross over here, so if you placed these kind of units here, these 5,000 watt units over here, you'll still get enough uh, coverage for this space here, is my point. And of course the uh, <clears throat> the heater itself, you have the, uh, let me turn off the clearance here, you have the heater, you have a flush mount frame up here, and then there's a one hour drywall um, firebox that your contractor would install, um, just out of 5 8 drywall and that'll be inside of the box itself. <clears throat> I orientated these heaters this direction just based on the ceiling, or excuse me, the roof uh, style here, but uh, may or may not work out based on where the uh, you know corner beam here goes. I'm not sure what they call that. I apologize for that. I also apologize I don't have the whole model of the home here. It's a rather beautiful home, um, but uh, I can only do the portions here that I need to to work with. So, all right. Well, I hope this has helped you. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application, feel free to send us an email to support uh, at, actually, I'm sorry, that's going to be designs at patioheat.com. And if you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up, that helps with our YouTube algorithms. We don't advertise, we don't monetize, you don't have to watch commercials, so those thumbs ups help us to get our word out and help others. Thank you very much and have a great day.